Aloha. Welcome to Punks for Progress Weekly What the Fuck Report. I'm Punker Mike. That's Reverend Aaron. How's it, Prada? Hey, bro. Good, man. How are you? I'm all right. How are you doing? Excellent. Listen, so we got a good show. Uh, see, before I get into what we're going to be covering, uh, there's kind of some punk rock announcements. One is not so good news, and one is great news. Um, so seven seconds posted today. Kevin did that they're calling it quits. They're officially yeah, like, done. I saw that. And, um, that's heavy. I mean, that, um, that's a huge loss, man. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm a Reno guy. They're Skino. They're like kind of day one for Reno punk rock. And, um, you know, when they cite like, um, Troy, the drummer has spinal issues and stuff and just really saps his stamina and ability to just beat away We're on drums. We're not getting any younger, yeah. man. And, They've been around since you know the beginning of the scene. Thirty-eight years. Thirty-eight years. One of the things that Kevin said in his statement was that um, you know it was like kind of hard because they're like two years away from a forty anniversary, you know, and <clears throat> and so they canceled. They're not going to be playing punk rock bowling, and they had a European thing <clears throat> set up, and they're not doing that. But you know, and also Troy, or not Troy, but um, Steve has you know he's been battling addiction and stuff for years, and he's. Looks like he's kind of getting ahead of it, you know, but their mom passed away not too long ago either, uh, also, and, um, you know, did she, I, I would see her around town in Reno all the time, dude, and she was always wearing a seven second shirt and always had a Walkman listening to her kids playing seven seconds, and she would always tell people, I'm listening to my, my sons, this is seven seconds I'm listening to, and they're the best, and you know what I mean? And just... That's so that was really heavy on them, and yeah. and um, so it's just it's one of those things that happen, man. But so, what's up to seven seconds? And thank you for fuck, yeah, man. man. Hey, Kevin, Thirty-eight thanks, years man. of badass punk rock, man. All you guys, and you know, and their like, thing was like look, we listening. could get other members, we could get other members, or we could, you know, and they're like, no, these are the four people that are seven seconds, and that's how it's going to be. And so, fucking good on them. But in good news, uh, oh yeah, yeah okay, Jake, so. We, Joey Shithead's at it again, man. Um, <laughs> he was running for mayor of Barnaby. So, um, nice. Joey Shithead from DOA. So, you know, he, he ran for parliament years ago. Okay, and, what's uh, his real name? Joey Keithley. Yeah, there you go. Okay, okay. And uh, so, uh, uh, much support to Joey, although we're Americans. Oh, I yeah, hope totally. the, I think oh. he would be an excellent mayor. I think it, it just kind of suits him. He he gives a shit, and he knows his community, and he understands the <laughs> dynamics of his community. He's a smart dude, man. And like, so that should a. be his campaign. And, that should be his motto: Joey Shithead gives a shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and but you know what? He's also um, he knows a lot of people in Canadian government, and. He's not. He doesn't. He's not seen as some, you know, idiot, foul punk rocker, kook. Right? Like they understand that this is. Poser. He means it. You know, he means it. He wants to. You know. So, um, so in other good news, Yale uh, recently um, produced a study that shows that um, uh, people who tend to be, um, you know, conservative, also tend to have larger uh, amygdalas <laughs> of course they do <laughs> <laughs> you know i we mean just, we, we've you know all what? known that right? conservatives are give, given over easily to fear tactics and fear mongering but now we know why <laughs> so that it's so it's not that like if you become conservative your amygdala will grow it's that people with a larger amygdala so the amygdala is your fight or flight mechanism of your right. brain it's the oldest part uh, of the human brain and, we've and, talked and, about and, it on the show Yes, I tend to drone on incessantly about it and how the prefrontal <laughs> cortex ability to you know differentiate between the fight or flight mechanism and for people who are who are just kind of really given over to fear <laughs> tend to be conservatives and so <laughs> so it's true they got um, funky brains and we knew it. <laughs> we have scientific so on today's down. show. Yeah, we have scientific proof and it's in the amygdala and surprise, surprise, really. You know what I mean? Like, duh. But uh, so on today's so, show, anyway. we're going to talk a, a lot about um, kind of the uh, Trump administration's big shift um, in foreign policy focus 
and it's towards Iran, and it's all tied up in the Tillerson firing when Mike Pompeo and yeah. Haspel. And so we're really going to break down that as well as kind of the nature of why Iran's uh, such a target of them now and um, the nature of the relationship between Iran and Saudi Arabia and how that plays into it and the arms trade and yeah, all that. Yeah, they kind really of- got Iran up their ass, don't they? I mean, it seems like they have for quite a while now. And it gets complicated. So we've done some homework on this issue, and we're going to try and flesh it out for you guys. We're also going to be talking about the school walkouts, and we've got some oh, yeah. uh, oh, and stuff from um, uh, Hawaii and from um, Chino, where Mike and I had both lived, but don't live there anymore. And, and anyway, so we're, <laughs> we have friends uh, there, though. Yes, Hunts we do. for progress and, is everywhere. Everywhere we're growing. Um, uh, we're also going to be talking about the Asta Muerte Cafe in Oakland. Some of our uh, listeners may already be aware there are a cafe in Oakland that has declared that they refuse to serve uniformed police officers. And it um, recently has resulted in an attack by the alt-right just this last weekend. So we're going to cover all that and get you all up to speed on what Asta Muerte is as well as um, what happened just on Sunday with an alt-right attack on them. We're going to be talking about the Austin bombings. And um, which seem to yeah, be what the fuck, right? for all intents and purposes, it's looking like a targeted um, terrorist well, bombing attack against and minorities about- and associated with activism. And but we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. And we're also we have a scene report with SoCal Shannon, as usual. Another awesome Yay. scene report from her. And, um, yeah, so that's what we're covering on today's show. Um, so why don't we, we got three videos lined up for you and let's show that to them. Um, we got some, um, a quick skim, um, is going to bring us some fucking news. And then, uh, we got a nib <laughs> cartoon and then also we're going to see, uh, we're going to check in with, yeah. um, Alex Jones version of what's going on with Tillerson and all this Iran God, stuff. So. Not him again, dude. We too much Alex Jones on our show. No, but that's the dude that he, I mean, that's almost day one for the narrative coming from the right, you know, and then yeah, yeah. Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity picks up bits and pieces from Alex Jones, and then <laughs> that just ends up being the president's policy. It's terrifying. So, um, yeah, let's play those three videos, and then we'll come back and get into it, bro. Let's do it. Rise and shine, motherfuckers. I am your host, The Stimulator, and this is a fucking news quickie. Today I bring you good fucking news as world famous racist asshole Dick Sphincter has announced he's canceling his hashtag Fart Right Tour. I, I really hate to say this, and, and I, I definitely hesitate to say this, but Antifa is. Antifa is winning. To make matters more embarrassing, Sphinxter's chief security, Matt Hindlegs, was caught fucking his second-in-command's wife. Matt Parrott, the Turt Wankers Party's media spokesperson, also happens to be the stepfather to Hindlegs' wife. Parrott called the pigs on his homie after the Nazi teddy bear allegedly whooped his ass. When the popo arrived at Hindlegs' crib, he was arrested for beating his wife. While violence against women is no laughing matter, I do take great joy in seeing these scrotum pirates descend into chaos. At the time of this writing, Parrot called it quits from the wankers party and their web infrastructure was offline. But this is no time to claim victory as the fight against white supremacy rages on. In Austin, a string of bombings apparently targeting black and brown peeps has homies suspecting these to be the work of racists. And in the UK, Antifa still has to contend with the cock splurts from the English Defense League walking around their hoods. In this clip, EDL founder Tommy Robinson got his ass handed to him right outside of Mickey D's. And that's it for this fucking news quickie. Hasta la pasta, compañeras. So then he told me he wanted to... (gasps) After a decade of decline, the global arms trade is booming again thanks to rising instability around the world. While America's will to be the world's policeman is fading, yawn, it remains the world's biggest arms dealer. Over the last five years, transfers of major weapons reached their highest point since the Cold War. The arms trade amounted to $31 billion in 2016, and five countries scooped up 75% of those profits. The U.S. alone is responsible for a third of all weapons exports. We're number one! Woohoo! <laughs> Russia is a close second. Germany, France, and China are distant runners-up. Meanwhile, Trump's pledge to boost military spending means even more American hardware on the market. 
So where do all these weapons go? India is the world's biggest buyer and gets most of them from Russia. They work great on journalists. Saudi Arabia uh, is the second biggest buyer uh, and most of its weapons uh, come from the US. I love making huge deals, okay? Globally, the demand for arms is driven by two regions, the Middle East and Asia. Southeast Asian states are responding to Chinese aggression in the South China Sea by stockpiling weapons. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, Sunni states are arming themselves as their regional cold war with Iran heats up in battlegrounds like Yemen and Syria. Oh. Large weapon stockpiles in unstable states can backfire, like when ISIS seized a big chunk of Iraq's weapon in 2014. Thanks for the guns, Uncle Sam. Don't mention it. But there's no real international law governing the arms trade. We just break it anyway. The UN passed an arms treaty two years ago, but Russia didn't sign it, and the US didn't ratify. We need to stop this madness. The only bombs America should be supplying overseas are its Transformers movies. I want to speak now to my State Department colleagues and to our interagency colleagues and partners at DOD and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, most particularly. To my Foreign Service officers and Civil Service colleagues, we all took the same oath of office. Whether you're a career, employee, or a political appointee, we are all bound by that common commitment to support and defend the Constitution, to bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and to faithfully discharge the duties of our office. Well, this is all coded. As a State Department, we are bound together by that oath. This is really cryptic. We remain steadfast here in Washington and at post across the world, many of whom are in danger pay situations without their families. This is some kind of signal to the state behind that works. The world needs selfless leaders like these. He's really proven to be a double Ready agent. To work with long-standing allies, new emerging partners and allies, who now many are struggling as democracies, and in some cases, are dealing with human tragedy, crisis of natural disasters, literally crawling themselves out of those circumstances. This is all coded. These are experiences that no lecture hall in an academic environment or at a think tank can teach you. Only by people going to the front lines to serve can they develop this kind of talent. To the men and women in uniform, I'm told for the first time in most people's memory the Department of State and Department of De Defense have a close working relationship where we all agree the U.S. leadership starts with diplomacy. The men and women in uniform at the Department of Defense under the leadership of Secretary Mattis and General Dunford protect us as Americans and our way of life daily at home and abroad. <laughs> As an all-volunteer military... All right, well, he's just basically virtue signaling now, but that earlier stuff about taking the oath and everybody needs to stay at their post and everything, that was... Stay your post, I guess, means deep state. Stay there, hang on, cavalry's coming. But let me tell you, there's major infiltration. And look, I'm not even saying Tillerson's a bad guy, but he's a yes man. He can't handle the pressure of what I'm sure they've done to him. <clears throat> but the word is... He's being removed and was so stunned by what he was told Friday that he couldn't be, be seen for a day because people try to cover their butts. Buddy, there's no covering your butt in this battle. We're going in. We're going in 100%. Get that through your head. We'll be right back. Okay, what the fuck was that? I mean... What 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 was he? What the fuck was he even saying? Oh, I know. It's coded, right? It's coded. It's coded, dude. It's cryptic. It's, cryptic. it's coded. It's holy coded. moly! It's all coded. It's all okay, coded. It's so, <laughs> I mean, you know Tillerson what? It is, didn't is... sound too stoked there. I mean, his voice was like well, choking up, and I was like, "Is he gonna cry right now?" I was like, "Oh my god!" And he didn't say anything that was all that weird or controversial. Like, what is the code that he's talking in? Because he's just kind of giving you the rundown, basic fucking talking points of "I'm out of here," <laughs> you know. But I love America and the Constitution, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's all coded. What is the code? What is he saying? What is he you trying know, to... Yeah, exactly. What's the... Deep I mean, state. Deep state. state. It's deep trying, state. Yeah, that means Trump's deep state. Globalist trying to bring down Trump. You know? It, and it's a complete misunderstanding. Because, look, 
it's you know, Alex vanity. Jones has to have this narrative that that Trump is this, you know, ultimate savior from this, you know, deep state conspiracy of Illuminati's and globalists and <clears throat> Jews uh, and that for Tillerson to leave. You know, this is so indicative of um, fascism historically and especially like with neo-Nazis is like if you dissent from the ranks, even like a hint of a step, you're not just out. You are like the worst type of um awful traitorous human being that has ever lived like you just inst- you become worse than their enemy you know and uh, yeah but and they have to that's like, you like cultism. it is you know and it's because any any um you know it's amygdala because they're you know this is a gang of uh, big old amygdala having motherfuckers right <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah uh, yeah any- that, that threatens, you know, what they've bought into and the validity of what they've bought into, the garbage they've bought into um, has to be destroyed. And, you know, and listen, you know, fuck Tillerson, OK, in a big, giant, huge way. Well, yeah, fuck I mean, dude. no, I'm not stoking on him at all. Cool. Come on, dude. Exxon CEO. I'm sorry. Right. And, you know, you know what Jank's line is, his his take on the Tillerson firing. Cause, see, he's all Jank's all stoked on himself uh, from Young Turks because he. um he kind of predicted ahead of time. He said, you know, this deal fell through with this this oil deal with Exxon Mobil and Russia. And and when that fell through, Jank went on and did a video, said, OK, Tillerson's out. And his days are numbered. And within a week, this happened and he was fired, you know. And um, Wow. But, you no, know, I we, didn't catch that. And so but what this all is, is um, it, it, it's a, um, a shift in the Trump administration's focus of foreign policy right it's um they're really really gearing towards this iran thing because you got to look at all the players in this big mix-up it's not just that they fired tillerson there's a big change up happening right they're bringing in mike pompeo okay what, are you what, kidding what, me no. what wasn't he fired already <laughs> right and let's just get this straight mike pompeo has accepted the largest amount of coke money of anybody for like the last four election cycles. Hands down, he is the largest recipient of K-O-C-H money. Nuts. <laughs> right. 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 Not Coca-Cola. And he's not a Coke Not cocaine dealer. money. Right. I know. It right, sounded right. funny. I'm just, Coke okay, brothers, anyway. Right. right. <laughs> uh, um, so, you know, that's that guy. But his th- he is on board with fuck the Iran deal. Oh, yeah. And let's go get him. And, you know. Well, now, isn't he, wasn't he the one that was fired because... Of his ties to Russia? Is that why he was fired? I can't even remember because... Just, Wasn't he so the one in the, one of the first ones? I know, right? <laughs> anyway. Well, that was all part yeah, of the deal, but it doesn't too. matter. Russia's, He's a Russia's in on this. Yeah, but Russia's in on this Iran thing, too. Well, okay, so they have... You know, the whole world's in on this Iran thing. It's, it's, it, this is a global well, issue. That's what I'm going to talk about. So it's like, you know, you got... Iran, which is um, mostly Shia, okay, and um, it was the Shia that Shia um, Muslim, Shia Muslim, as opposed to Sunni. So there's Sunnis and Shias, right? And Shias are, are essentially like the minority. So, but so it was the Shia in Iran that um, um, overthrew the Shah that was put in by the united states right, right? Um, so it was the ayatollah they, back in the 70s that overthrew the shah that, right right that right. we put that and the he, americans put in right and that was and shia he was a shia he was a shia cleric right okay. and so people like in saudi arabia and stuff were a little freaked out by this because they didn't want this shia faction of islam to sort of be the voice of all islam and they were afraid that like this uprising and this revolution in iran would lead to <clears throat> You know, you know the domino theory that the old, um, you know, uh, McCarthyist, you know, Red Scare people were like, you know, if, you know, like uh, with Nixon when he's it talking was a about threat you know, to their way have to overthrow of... communism here. If communism happens here and gets a foothold, it'll be the whole world. And so for the right, Sunnis, right. That, you know, and the Wahhabi, because... Wahhabists, and the Wahhabists in Saudi Arabia, they're like, we don't want this Shia to be a trend and and take over our community. So. You got Saudi Arabia now is, gets on the defensive and just starts funding all this extreme Wahhabist. Um, su- um, I mean, Sunni isn't all extremist ISIS, okay? But 
it, it's crumbing out of that faction because it's being so heavily funded by Saudi Arabia, and that's what's leading to ISIS. This Wahhabism, what? extreme, extreme. Okay, Wahhabism. Okay, you're losing me. Wahhabism. You talked about Sunni that's, and Shia. So, the, 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 so there's Sunnis. It's, I'm not going to break down specifically what Wahhabism is, but it is the version of uh, Sunni Islam that the Saudi family practices. Okay, and okay. It's that That's all. Okay. Impressive, militant, you know, no women voice and all this kind of stuff, right? Okay. So we're talking so, Sunni Shiite again, again. Right, which has just been the case for decades. And exactly. constantly as corporate um, – in interests that crave and covet the natural resources of these fucking countries are just like stirring that shit up perpetually, constantly us. for decades. Us. Well, I mean, I don't like us because I don't. I'm not fucking. I've been protesting America. against all that shit basically my whole life. Well, right? yeah. But well, yeah, America, the, and we've talked about the um, <clears throat> the um, well, you know, like women people. can't. Yeah, they're, 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 they're horrible. And, you know. And, there's beheadings going on there, and it's and, and it's not like and we sell them. Iron... Go ahead, go ahead. And we sell them a butt ton of uh, weapons. He just did a big, huge freaking weapons deal. We make the greatest deals. I make great deals. I make great deals. We're right. number one. No, that's yeah. absolutely. We sell Saudi Arabia more weapons than anybody. I mean, they're, they're our biggest buyer, right? So there's the other side of why you know all these you know. We're the largest exporter of weapons. So weapons manufacturers, excuse me, who also run the NRA, right? Or, you know, are their weapons completely behind? Are they the not? They're going to profit all this. It's you know, so the weapons industry gets to make shit tons of money off off of this chaos and mayhem that they're exploit. Look, there's going to be issues between Sunnis and Shias. I mean, there's religious factions fight against each other all the fucking time, man. That's just why I'm not too particularly uh, fond of religion in general. But going in and trying to, one, steal all the fucking resources that these um, countries live in or, you know, prop up, the, like, the Saudi family so that they we can rape the land of its resources and the people that live there. And, you know, and, we and then this already, haven't we give them a bunch of guns and make a bunch of money off of them fighting each other over it while we rape their fucking resources. You know, but like we've been doing since and the wow, 70s. What, and right, and this is the, the American foreign policy is the greatest ISIS fucking recruiting tool there is. You know, and then and then check it out, dude. Look, they're talking about right. okay, so they're exactly. going to pay out. We got we so they're going to um, put this. What is it, Gina Haspel? Is that her name, Gina? I know it's Haspel, but well, hang on, hang on, Charles CIA. Hang on, and that sent message about how we're going to give me just say this and then I'll let you talk is this is going to set the tone for how we're going to go about this new foreign policy focus on Iran is like okay so let's get the torture queen to run the CIA as we get geared up and ready to go into this fucking total clusterfuck fiasco another of confronting fuck. Iran militarily another clusterfuck fiasco today was the anniversary 15 year anniversary of the invasion of Iraq <clears throat> and we all know what we got from the invasion of Iraq. ISIS. Yeah. Right? Talk, that was a yeah. clusterfuck, and this is going to be even worse. So, And you're absolutely right, Aaron, bringing this horrible person into the CIA like this. I, I mean, this was it's completely premeditated. Yeah. So let's get people up to speed on who she is. So one, she was... Um, there was some bad reporting about some of the things that she was responsible for that had been retracted in relation to right. I believe it was Abu Ghraib. Um, but then, but what she is responsible one, she was one hundred percent on board with um, any form of torture and o did oversee torture in black spots while and she was she, there. She was there and she, actually uh, oversaw it happening and even after and this stuff came out and destroyed documents and proof of yes. stuff, shred stuff, and oversaw that and was singularly responsible for that kind of stuff. And, See Democracy um, Now. They did a whole thing on it, yeah. Coverage of who she is, and she's a terrifying fucking monster, man. No oh, doubt, right? Okay, so she was in on the, uh, apparently it was the Abu Zubaydah thing where there was some controversy. Yeah, the people may remember Abu Zubaydah, but the thing was, he was a guy who was tortured like fucking 78 times or something. Right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And it turns out that the information they got from him was faulty 
He didn't hold up. He just told them what they wanted because, I don't know, they were torturing him, and he wanted them to stop torturing him. Imagine <laughs> that, now, right? Let's go. And remember, Trump did say that he believes torture is okay. Yep. You know, it, you know when, when, the, when the waterboarding thing was going on under Bush, bro, you remember, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, whether it was torture or not, it was enhanced interrogation and all that stuff. They wouldn't even, they, they, the neocons refused to re, refer to it as torture. Trump's like, nah, it was good torture people. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's good stuff, torturing. Yeah, you know? because when, it, it works when so it well. Torture. Just like his fucking wall. Anyway, go ahead. So, I mean... It's the it's brain of a child, seriously. A wall is going to work, and so is torture. And then how is it... It doesn't um, work. Anybody I, will tell you that. John Bolton. John Bolton's up in this mix, too. Have, do you know some more details about that, bro? I, I can't remember. So, don't. I don't know who John Bolton is. He's the guy with the mustache, big mustache. That He didn't make it in the administration. Uh, the rumors were that Trump didn't like his mustache. Um, but this dude uh, is yeah, like... Yeah. He, Neocons. There is, I mean, he. There has never been a a, a, um, a um, first strike war, you know, um, that he hasn't liked. You know what I mean? He's so been just lusting for a war with Iran forever and anywhere, you know. And so I can't remember what where he he's being brought into this, and I just can't remember in what specific position it is. But yeah, that's this is what they're gearing up for, man, and. They've been wanting war with Iran for a long time, man. They were totally pissed off at the Iran deal that Obama made. Right. Well, and and look, I, I don't want to sound alarmist because you know we did a little, we got a little bit on the oh shit, we're going to war with North Korea alarmist tip. We did here on Pugs for Progress, and I don't want to over exaggerate. It just doesn't guarantee that there's going to be a war with Iran, but. All of this stuff is you have to take note of it and go, OK, at the very least, there's something a Bruin and it's in relation to Iran. And then, you know, and we already know our relationship with Saudi Arabia. So it's incredibly important. And there is a it, it looks like a, a concerted sort of premeditated effort, like you said, Mike, premeditated, you know. So we'll be watching it and we'll see. And it's I think it's important yeah. to watch. Uh, Mike Pompeo and Gina Haspel and, you know, keep yourself informed on those people. So, um, and listen, um, there's people who, um, are just fed up with this shit like kids, you know, let's talk, you know, the arms industry that's fueling this whole thing that we just got talking about, you know, that it has domestic fucking ramifications as well. Right, bro. Oh, you think seriously? I mean, well, Uh, this week we had the uh, National School Walkout. We talked about it, I believe, on the last show. And it happened. And my daughter walked out and met with many of her classmates. And I was extremely proud of her. And I made, oh, you're walking out today, right? This is what's going on, right? <laughs> She's like, I say, you know where you're going? I'm like, go to, the, go to the office and ask them where to go. They'll tell you. But walk out, dude. And, uh, yeah, she totally walked out, and she took some pictures, and then a bunch of her friends sent her pictures as well. So her friends in California, um, in Chino, sent her some pictures of uh, her high school, and then her friends' uh, other high school, and then um, I believe we have video of one of the kids that got up and spoke a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, why don't we, let's play that real quick, it's just a minute, a little over a minute, let's play that real quick, and then um, we'll come back and talk some more about it. Um, if you don't already know me, my name is Brett Chavez. I'd like to start out by thanking everyone who worked to organize this great event today, namely Pepsi Yao and Sarah Wang. Without you, students like me wouldn't have this platform in the first place. No matter what stance you've taken in regards to the tragic event at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, being active and developing your own beliefs for our nation's future is of immense significance. After this event, one thing seems to be clear, and that is that change is necessary. Everything we've been doing up to this point clearly hasn't worked. Shootings are still an arguably common occurrence. Some may argue that shootings aren't the problem we should be focusing on, that the amount of mass shootings related, the amount of mass shooting related deaths are merely a drop within a vast ocean of preventable deaths in America. To them I say those lives are more than a statistic, more than a percentage. They are, in one way or another, preventable lives lost. No matter how small, we should strive for better. 
I believe we are better. I hope we are better. Humanity as a whole should always seek improvement. We should never be content with where we are. There's very few, there's very few people who say that we've done everything we can, who say this is just how things are. Nearly everyone has an idea on how to fix it. These ideas can differ drastically, but what it boils down to is all of us knowing that this isn't right, that some change has to happen, that this should never happen again. Whether you want better mental health care, more gun control or reform, or less lonely kids who won't have to feel driven to this point, all of you are here to honor the victims of this shooting and all other shootings. Events that left parents with empty homes, teenagers with empty desks, children without parents. We all want a world where we can declare for all to hear, never again, and know that we mean it. Know in our minds, hearts, and souls that we will fight and strive for a world where this never happens, never again. I hope that this generation united can make that a reality. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that was Chino Hills. I liked what he said um, about uh, preventable lives lost. There you go. Absolutely preventable. And I'm glad that these kids are seeing it. And you know what? Something else I heard is the NRA has been, you know, like they always do. They, oh, it'll go away. Give it, give it a week or two, and it kind of fades down. These kids are not letting it go away. They're not forgetting no. about it. And the NRA is shitting themselves over this. We got this, you know, we got uh, uh, March for Our Lives coming up, I believe, right? Yeah. I think I think we have something about that in our scene report. Uh, but I mean, these kids are not going to forget about this. You know, here's a f- that we've got, uh, you know, a few images from um, s- uh, some of the other uh, uh, protests around, uh, you know, obviously my daughter's friends sent me these, but, you know, from around Chino and, and then, you know, there was this little bit of a walk out here in, in, in uh, Waialua. Um, not too many signs. Uh, but you know, I guess kids had signs in Chino, and they had them out yeah. with no problem. So I'm and, I, this and was, all across the country, obviously, this I was is all just over the country. Say, Aaron, happened. This was a massive, huge. This is just a in, small in of, example of right. what happened in my community. Yes, it happened here, right at you know my daughter's high school, but it happened in her other high schools and in a little bigger community, as well as as you know schools all over the United States, all over the country, you know, in huge districts and in small districts. So uh, it was a definite success, I believe. And and it's not I a thing like the it's not that they're shitting themselves, man. I really do. Yes, because because these... it's going down, bro. I mean, come on. These kids are going to walk out every freaking day for 17 minutes until they freaking do something about it. And you know what? We've got we've got <clears throat> primaries coming up. And they know it and they're shitting themselves. I tell you, these kids. What did I hear? That um, there's going to be some oh, some X amount a number of kids uh, that are going to be 18 years old and, of, and ready to vote in the primaries and avail and if and if every single one of them votes, these people are out. They outnumber yeah. them. They t- just completely outnumber them. And these kids these, that are going to be 18 and ready to vote, they're ready to go. They're pissed and they're ready to go. Uh, yeah, and we're gonna make sure they're gonna just hope they don't vote in a bunch of established, you know, establishment Democrats. You know, if they do, um, they're gonna completely let these kids down. And I don't think I think these kids they're like activated, bro. Like I can't even like there was nothing like this when I was in school. Nothing like this. When, this has never happened, dude. Where there was this massive like not when i was in school political activation of children across the nation like this what i mean i mean maybe maybe even the civil Vietnam, rights bro? movement i don't know i don't know I was, man i, I don't think so dude then, and man, i so. and and i'll tell you mike like okay maybe not quite a little baby anyway. these kids we just uh witnessed the first showing of a massively politically uh, energized generation of kids I can't wait to see what they're going to do. And if these fucking establishment Democrats don't get, you know, and they're not, they're not going to get on board. They're not going to recognize. And these kids are going to be pissed when they don't. I well, think these kids think, are going to hold. I'm hold hoping it. that they're figure, oh, accountable. I think they're going to figure it out. And they're not going to take any shit from Diane Feinstein, for God's sake. You know, I mean, Kamala Harris may be able to pull the wool over their eyes. I'm not sure. 
But then again, how many of these establishment Democrats are going to realize that they don't have a freaking leg to stand on and they're going to end up going, okay, yeah, I better. You know, it's not, it's always the people that move first and the, and the, the politicians and government that moves last. So yeah. let's just, let's, you know, I say support them with everything we have because they're the ones that are going to be taking care of me when I can't do it. They're going to be running this country pretty soon. I mean, obviously my generation has fucked it up. So, you know, let's hope that my kid's generation is going to do a better job of it than my generation did. Well, I'll boomers. tell you, Mike, they're doing... Kahuna Chris says it was the boomers that fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, that was a comment. Yeah, and then and then Generation X came in and, like, just, you know, put the shit icing on the fucking shit cake, you know? <laughs> he said, in fact, they watched it all burn. He said, we're complicit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't yeah. know, man. I'll tell you, there's some people that I grew up with that I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? What are you, th- really, what are you thinking? I thought we all thought the same way back then. You know, I guess not, obviously, but then I guess some of our amygdalas aren't as big as others. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It is. Uh, well, and listen, so, so there's other things that... Um, you know, of course, it's always about you want to support efforts that are in in the works and ongoing and get, you know, do what you can to stand by efforts and be in solidarity with efforts. But there's other things you can do in your own communities. Like, for instance, dude, um, the Asta Muerte Cafe in Oakland, bro. Oh, um, God, dude. Yeah. Double shock us to those guys, man. Seriously. Oh, big time. So these people said straight up, we do not serve uniformed police officers. <laughs> Go do your work. Quit sitting around drinking coffee and eating donuts, damn yep. it. Go do your work. Go out and actually so listen, do something. Um, listen, we've got a little video. Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that kind of describes a little bit and gets you up to speed on what kind of awesome Muerte is, and then we'll come back and um, talk about it some more. So let's play that real quick. For Complex News, I'm Natasha Martinez. A coffee shop in Oakland refused service to a police in uniform. Asta Muerte Coffee cited the Oakland Police Department's alleged history of corruption, mismanagement, and scandal. According to its website, Asta Muerte is a people of color collectively run, worker-owned coffee shop. After refusing service to a sergeant who came into the coffee shop, the business sent out a letter to the local police union announcing that the business does not serve the police. On their Instagram, the coffee shop shared a lengthy post explaining why they chose to not serve police. They wrote in Spanish text what translates to talk to your neighbors, not the police, and they went into detail on why they're ignoring the backlash and choosing to stand strong in supporting their community. We have a policy of asking police to leave for the physical and emotional safety of our customers and ourselves. Oakland Police Department's recent attempts to enlist officers of color and its short-term touting of fewer officer-involved shootings does not reverse or amend its history of corruption, mismanagement, and scandal, nor a legacy of blatant repression. The coffee shop explained that once word got out that they refused service to an officer in uniform, police supporters have written their accounts with poor reviews. However, they stand on their opinion saying, We want to put this out to our communities now in case we end up facing backlash because, as we know, OPD, unlike the community, has tons of resources many of which are poured into maintaining smooth public relations to uphold power. It will be no surprise if some of those resources are steered towards discrediting us for not inviting them in as part of the community. The day the officer was refused service, he left the shop surprised without coffee and without incident. The police are calling this a teachable moment, and the sergeant said that he wants to develop a better relationship with the shop and the rest of the community. On Thursday, the Oakland Police Department tweeted, OPD, along with other community members, are reaching out to the business to have constructive dialogue in our efforts to unite our community. That's your news for now. For more on this and the rest of today's story, subscribe to Complex on YouTube. For Complex News, I'm Natasha Martinez. Wow, dude. So, you know what Kahuna Chris had to say about that one? It's really bad if a business in a capitalist society won't take your money. It's yeah, gotta be sure. fucked up. <laughs> but dude, Seriously? come on. Just incredible. I, I have good for such them, man. Back for them and stand having... by. I mean, even with the backlash going, go ahead. We don't yeah. care. I'm just wow. And and um, I mean, this is the kind of 
things that more people need and, to do. And even though it's you about... hired, more, even even though you hired more black officers, screw you. You still suck. I, yeah, I mean, it's just. I mean, the, we've done a number of a lot of coverage on what the police, what the police force is. I mean, it's the cul- the modern culmination of the old slave patrols, and and it's not to serve and protect. Well, except for you know, well, they serve and protect wealthy white guys, you know, but. Yeah, anyway, whether they're, say it doesn't matter know. what color guy in the uniform is, you know, and I, I just think it's fantastic because, you know, the way I believe um, I have uh, almost wholeheartedly that the best way to achieve the things we want in life is just to create them as opposed to waiting for other one, someone else to come along and do it. And, you know, and and saying, hey, look, you know what? I want a place where I can have a coffee and a freaking, you know, muffin and not have to worry about some pig coming in and fucking with me and making people nervous. Because, look, I don't care what society you live in, except for these fanatical blue line people. People don't, you know, when they see a cop in the rearview mirror, they don't go, oh, cool. Everything's going to be OK. There's a cop back there. No, everybody feels that. Oh, shit. You know, we're afraid of the police, you know, and. Fuck yeah. Um, can, I, a... can, can I tell you? Can I tell you? Okay, you know I lived in Redlands, like two blocks away from the 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 uh, the terrorists that shot all those people up in San Bernardino. They lived in Redlands, like down the street from me. I had cops patrolling the streets with their freaking, you know, assault weapons out for two weeks. And I felt completely not safe. Way less safe than I felt when they weren't there. So, I, I mean, from experience, I'm speaking from experience here. I was not happy with those cops running around with their freaking guns hanging out. You know, and my kid's right there in the car, dude. And it's full assault gear and, like, riot, you know. Completely, swap. totally, yeah. Militarized, militarized, you know. And and that's not to make us feel safe. That's to let them know who's in fucking charge. To let the community Redlands know we're in fucking charge here. Not like, hey, we're here for you. It's going to be okay. What can we do to ease your fucking fear and suffering or whatever? You no, know, nah. we're in fucking charge. You know. But some and, people feel more safe that way. I don't. I don't. Who are these people? Again, I think it's just these idiot, fanatical minority of um, blue line crazies. You know, I, I think on some kind of like, uh, you know, um, underlying level, even like with a lot of liberals and stuff, God, you see in the like pet the cop horses and do stuff like that, you know, and they 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 still don't fully understand that the police force isn't there for them. And, and so, yeah, there's people who I guess I, I, I think they feel comforted by the idea of the police. You know what I mean? Less than like. I don't think anybody feels all that comfortable when cops militarize and take to the streets with these big giant armored vehicles and fucking rat LRAD machines and shit. I don't, I, I don't know. I think there's Maybe a, I live in a my, who feels comfortable with that and feels safe. I think there's a that. minority. I think there's a minority of people that feel comfortable with that. Yeah. And what some of those uh, that minority did was this Sunday came out with their flags and their blue line flags and their America flags and their Trump bullshit and um, harassed the Austin Muerte coffee shop. And so it was... Um, of course they did. Of course they did. It was led by Will Johnson, who um, regular uh, viewers of Punks for Progress will be well aware of him. But you know what, Mike? I, I, I want to show them a little bit of the uh, Will Johnson genius in action um, when I debated him recently out in front of uh, Revolution Bush. Let's show okay. people this real quick. And then we'll come back and I'll explain what went down when they their sad, sad attempt at um, harassing us. Hey, would you let would you hey, let we've had good conversations hey, before you and I. But I've never been in the store. But you know it's here. Would they let me go in there? No, they're not going to let you. Why? Because I'm black? He, oh, come on. You know that. <laughs> I think if they don't let me in, that's the only reason no, why no, they no, won't let not, me it's in. It's not about. So let me ask you a question. You so if, me, if can you, I answer your first let question? Me, let me ask you a question. I love Will. If I go. Can I answer your if, first question? If a gay person goes to a bakery and they ask for to buy a book. Okay, that does, you're asking a, me to a, a gay bakery that's now A gay bakery that's now buying. Okay, they're cool. selling books. Right, you want to talk Will they be able to let it go in? Okay. Okay. So. So. 
Yeah, that insane word salad tirade of nonsense. Like, <laughs> okay, you know what he's trying to do, bro? Is he he's he's conflating this one mess of talking points and trying to make make it relevant to a different set of talking points. None of which he really has any like basis of true understanding or knowledge. They're just the talking points he's heard spewed, and he's trying to regurgitate them. And it just comes out, you know. One is the the, the controversy around, you know, is it a somehow an attack on religious freedom uh, if a bakery has to make a cake, you know, Christian bakery has to make a cake for um, a gay couple, right? And he tries to associate that somehow with they wouldn't let him in the store because he's a fascist <laughs> and right. an alt right guy, and so then he's like, so it has to be because I'm black and. And it just, it took me forever, bro, of watching that to figure out what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> you know, because like I said, it's such a jumbled word salad mess, you know. But this is the guy that organized in his little um, gaggle of patriot blue liners um, was responsible for the attack on Austin Muerte on Sunday. And so they show up, yeah, there's like dude. eight or nine of them. Yeah, that dude. And he's the central guy that the whole thing's built around, right? And wow. So they show up out in front of the coffee shop and start saying, um, you know, Blue Lives Matter, USA, Trump. And then he accuses everyone there. Um, well, actually, look, hold on. Um, within minutes, um, Tara Hawk from the Anti-Police Terror Project showed up and he's been doing a lot of stuff of like trying to get the word out and, and getting people to stand behind Austin Morte books or books, Austin Morte um, Cafe and um, so he saw that they were there and within minutes he's there and he starts live streaming and his live stream is 16 minutes that's all it is, is 16 minutes so when he shows up it's him and like maybe two or three other people and just the people who kind of work at the coffee shop and he's telling people on his live stream you need to get out here and support Austin Morte and just within minutes, this eight or nine people were just outnumbered like five to one, you know, shouting them down. And then he's yelling at all of them. You're all fooled by the mainstream media. You know, you're all <laughs> you're all mind controlled by the mainstream media. And it's like, no, dude, this is our fucking community like business and you're harassing them and we're not going to put up with it, you know. And like I said, just and so. And then, of course, the cops show up. And what do the cops do? They form a line and have their backs to the people who showed up to harass this cafe, uh, just like they did they too do. in San Bernardino, right? So they're squared yep. off against the people who were standing in support of their local community business. And the cops squared off against them. And, I, you know, and you might want to use the justification, well, you should expect that if you tell cops they can't come here. I don't give a fuck. It's not the cop's job to be liked. And to be appreciated and served coffee to. Bottom line is no. You can't fucking come in here and buy coffee in your uniform. And that doesn't give you license to defend this harassment. Cops and clan, man. Well, exactly. And I don't care that Will Johnson is black. He's a fascist. And he's pushing this pro-cop bullshit. Bootlicking crap. And then telling all of us, or not us, I mean, we weren't there, but telling all these people that they're mind-controlled by the mainstream media. It's just, li it's just like justification for everything he's doing and what would explain why people disagree with him. They have to be idiots who are mind-controlled. Well, why, why are you so threatened by this business deciding that they don't want to serve people? You know, do you have a big, giant amygdala, Will? I don't know. <laughs> right? But within minutes, bro, so the cops, they square off against the, the people supporting um, the local business. And then they um, make the um, Will and his gaggle of patriots uh, move across the street off to the other side of the street. And then the cops just stand in the middle of the street and create the barrier between the two. And Will and his friends just get, are getting just overwhelmingly shouted down. And then they leave. So this, you know, but here's the thing that's interesting about Tara Hawk's live stream is Facebook is took it down and they refused to post it and it's ridiculous and um but the people live streaming from the alt-right side of the exact same event uh their videos are up on facebook but Tara Hawks what the isn't. fuck is I that just, about i just think that's really fucking curious you know and i'll tell you and i watched Tara Hawks live stream um 
and and um, I was in the area, and I actually considered going down there, but it was within the 16 minutes they had left. You know what I mean? But I was damn damn right, I was going to go and stand and support the store. But um, the whole time, he dude, he's he's a smart dude, man. So what Anti Police Terror Project does is they do all kinds of community self defense programs, and he actually does like self defense training, and they do like. Um, um, they they can get you in touch with proper legal advice if you're being you know targeted by police or if you you feel you've been you know um, unjustly beat or murdered by police right whatever they do just so such amazing um, do it yourself community based support programs right and um, so he he's telling people all the time hey no we're not going to stand for this let's mobilize as a community let's get out here and fucking confront this shit look people this is what's happening this is what happens when you actually express your freaking right. You know, these people are going to come out and do this. So get out here and let's fucking confront them. There's nothing in it that's like instig, you know, would instigate anybody or that should be even seen as controversial. All he's saying is, hey, get out here and stand in front of the store and stand up for this local community. But his video is taken down. But the people who um, are responsible for the harassment, who are showing video of the exact same event. Their video is still up. And that's, I've been showing some of it as we're talking, and that's the video that you've been seeing. It's from their live stream. Uh, uh. But, um, you know, I mean, I, I think it was uh, obviously, I, I, don't, I may go without saying, but once they made this declaration, you just knew that alt rights were going to come out after them. You know, it's just a matter of time till they right, did. And, right. Um, it, went really bad for them i mean, obviously you know i mean within 16 minutes it's not like there was this vast network of people waiting just in case that they you know are around the corner from austin where day in case no it was within moments the the community of oakland said no fuck that fuck that you don't get to attack our local you know people from our community fuck you so good on everyone that showed up yeah. thanks a lot to our hawk yeah. um, them to do that and being on the spot with it like that and being responsible and smart in the way you motivated people um and i just i, I would suggest anybody really um look into the anti-police terror project and and um they could use all kinds of help and and um there's a lot you can learn from them so uh, check them out yeah now um you know moving on to other you know alt-right terrorism i mean i guess we don't know for sure there's this ongoing rash of bombings in austin texas yeah, Where, it just happened today, yesterday, um, uh, and I think it, I believe it happened at the like FedEx plant plant, and it blew up, and nobody was killed, but there was a uh, there's some a couple of people were hurt, I guess, full of nails and shit like that. You know, yeah. and, and people have been killed in it's San Antonio. Night. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think a um, I think a, a Latino lady was injured in this one. Um, that when it happened, but no, it it's it looks like the, uh, who it's ever it looks like it's a serial bomber, and they're they're uh, targeting prominent black families in Austin, Texas. The one that happened just well, not 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 yesterday. Prominent black fam, not prominent black families. What it is is people connected to um, vocal activists, like people involved in you know um, immigrants' rights activism and stuff. So like people involved in that community, that's where they're singular from, and and, and my. Mom, you know, minority rights activism and stuff. So it could be at this point coincidence, I guess. It's not that, fucking coincidence. Come no, on. We got to throw that out there, but it just really doesn't look I'm, like it. It's, I'm th it's not. Come on. Let's just say what it is. It's not. It's it's actually, this is, this, this it's a serial bomber, dude. And he had one that fucked up on him today, and it, it happened in San Antonio. It fucked up, or yesterday, I guess. And aside so. from that one, the other ones have a number of things yeah. in common, you know? Or it's minorities, and they seem to be connected to uh, prominent people within the activist community. And again, minorities all across the board, the people who are being injured by these things. And yeah, this, what is what, the fuck? this is what far-right, big giant amygdala thinking results in. And the, and the ridiculous fear-mongering that people like Alex Jones do. That gets people all hyped up and terrified of, you know, this cultural Marxism and, you know, and this threat of the liberal Illuminati and the deep state. And, and 
you know, that might get you a lot of clicks on your videos, but it also, like, people take that shit seriously and then go make, you know, these homemade improvised bombs, like, you know, Unabomber style death machines Boston, to kill this imagined Boston bomber that they, back, 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 right. you know, yeah. And, you know, to, to, to stop this thing, this imaginary thing that they've been tricked into being terrified of. And it just and and it all bolsters and makes power that much stronger and more capable of functioning. You know, I mean, it just bolsters power. It's it's fascism. It's fascism, bro. You know. But hey, on a note, we got a scene report. We still count channel. Oh yeah, hey, let's do it. Check it out. Let's do that. Hey, what's up, Shannon? Hey, Aaron, what's up? You have a uh, SoCal Shannon scene report for us today? I do. Hey, Mike. Hi, Shannon. How are you guys doing? Excellent. 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 How are you? I'm good. I have a few things that's going on this uh, upcoming weekend. This, this weekend in Southern California? In Southern California. That would be the SoCal Shan report, but I, I just thought that was self-explanatory. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now I get it. Now I okay. get why we call it that. What a trip. Who knew? Oh, okay. got it. Okay. All right. All right. So in Southern California, this weekend, Friday, the 23rd, we have a couple things going on in L.A., uh, the first one is the Ramones Art Exhibit. This is put on just by a bunch of bands, basically. Um, but punks, uh, Punk for Punks and No Edge Booking is putting this shindig on at Five Star Bar in downtown L.A. at 8 o'clock. It's $15. They're going to have bands, art, vendors, and just a bunch of people geeking out over the Ramones. Awesome. What's the date on that and again? That's um, Friday, March 23rd. And where again? At Five Star Bar, downtown LA. Right. Don't, don't mind me it sounds because really, I sound really like cool. froggy. It's my allergies. <laughs> my voice is deep, but not usually like this. So. No worries. That sounds like a anyway, really, really amazing event. Seriously, though. That does sound fun. I know, right? It does sound fun. I don't know. They, they're having vendors, so I imagine they're going to have food. They're going to have food. Yeah. Um, the same night, something that, that I think is even cooler, because I'm a dork, um, <laughs> a group called Movie Club 35 Millimeter is putting on a uh, midnight screen of the Blues Brothers oh. in 35 millimeter. Oh, I hate Illinois Nazis. At, <laughs> Illinois Nazis. At the, that's at the Vista Theater in Los Angeles. Vista Theater's on Sunset. Oh, man. That, that sounds I like won't a be able to go freaking to. great time. They used to do... I used to go to midnight movies at the Balboa Theater. Somewhere else in Orange County. I can't remember where. I believe I saw Rocky Horror there. Balboa anyway, Theater? I think I saw so. The uh, there. Probably. And yeah. that was a freak show. The audience was a freak show. I don't recall the movie at all. Seriously. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm pretty sure crazy. I went there with Davido, Mike. But, yeah. And I remember it I being think I might like have one, of the most imp- one of the most impressive Rocky Horrors that I had been to. Because I... Uh, me and Mike are huge Rocky Horror fans, Shannon, by the way. But, um, yeah, so I've seen it in a you bunch can't of places. Be more remember of, did you on the album back then? Yes. Did you memorize the songs oh, back yes. then? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm like absolutely. a way big are you kidding? Rocky we were... Horror dork. Our number I one video. I didn't dress up when I went, though. I, did, our I number, never did that. Our number one video on the channel, our most popular video, is um, Mike's <laughs> video he made for Sweet Transvestite. <laughs> It's the stupid, most popular video on Punk video, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but did you want to marry Tim Curry? Because I did. No, no I can't I just say wanted that to I wanted to like marry him. Tim Curry. <laughs> I just wanted to dress like him. Because I fun. wanted to be that dressed 
just the same. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so we're talking about the Blues Brothers who fucking hit the Yeah. Olympics. I wanted to be Columbia anyway. Columbia. Go ahead. Columbia is well, the badass. I can, seg- I can segue this because I dressed up as Elwood Blues for Halloween one time. So. Ha! Did you know? I did. That, that was hard. I dressed up as Joan Crawford one year. I didn't get pictures. That's so messed up. Anyway, we want to know what's going on the following day, Saturday. Absolutely. Yes. Um, in uh, Anaheim, Orange County, California, there is a community group called La Colonia. Yes, I sound white. Community Center. <laughs> and they're putting on an event. Um, Saturday the 24th, March 24th, called the Decolonizing Mental Health Festival. Um, it's in, it's at the community center in Anaheim. That starts at 12 o'clock. It goes till 10. And their, their focus is on, um, native suicide rates, basically, but it's, it's for all mental health. It's not just for indigenous people. You can go go there they have mental health workshops spirituality stuff workshops um music art bands spoken word it's like a big and food wow Gotta have food. feed them and they will come <laughs> feed them and they will come yep something like that now that sounds really fantastic and, as well like yeah, yeah like, i didn't see how hours. much it costs to get in or if it's a donation or or how bad it is, but they have an event page on Facebook. Very cool. And then the same day or afternoon or night, depending on what part of Southern California you're in, um, is the March for Our Lives Saturday the 24th as well. Right, right. Which is all over the place, right? Yes. Right. Orange County specifically, there's, is it 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Centennial Regional Park in Santa Ana? And then there's one event I know of in Los Angeles. They're having multiple. Like, they're, I, I'm, I know they're having a couple in the Valley, um, a couple in downtown, and then I think one in Long Beach. But the one I know of, about is starts at 9 a.m. Um, Pershing Square, and right. all of these are headed by the kids, the students, but then um, you know different organizations are are. Um, why can't I think of the, oh, sponsoring them? That's the word. The Women's March is 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 helping them, is sponsoring that. I believe that was the uh, that was the 17th. This one is just strictly the kids. Okay. Righteous. But then they're no, taking on local too, and, sponsorship, like yeah, I'm pretty sure they're just getting like, lots of endorsements. One. Yeah, it's endorsements that they're getting mostly, and I'm right. sure they're getting some type of people are probably donating to them too. But that's we should endorse them. Sponsor well, them. yeah, like the one in in Orange yeah. County, they have like every indivisible. Group. You can't even. There's so many people that have endorsed it. Um, I, I it's like every organization in in, in Orange County, but that's the only one they're having so that may be why los angeles is having more than one gotcha well awesome so uh there is plenty to do in southern california this weekend yeah especially saturday yeah all day so, well, yeah thank you so much shannon you rule you every are so week. much welcome thank I you rule. for doing all the homework work well, on that absolutely somewhere <laughs> yeah now you just got to rule over those allergies. <clears throat> yeah. I doubt it. All right, you guys. Cool. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. All right. Talk to Alrighty. you All righty. Wow. Good show, dude. Yeah, totally. Um, covered lots of stuff on it. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Uh, an excellent scene report from Shannon, uh, as always. Thank you so much for that again. And, um... Thanks for to Kahuna Chris for hanging out and, yeah. uh, in his four cents. And um, uh, so, listen, we're going to go out on a um, video by the Screamers. 
Uh, but before we do, we want to make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We want to make sure that you like and share and follow us on Facebook. Like and share all that shit. Follow us on the tweeters. And go to patreon.com punks for progress and give us all your money. All of it. Yeah. So do that. Literally all of your money. Thank you. you. Know. And <laughs> no, but if you could donate to that, that would be badass because, uh, you know, we want to um, grow this, bring more people into it and expand it and um, get more people checking in with us and doing the scene reports. And again, I want to, I want to let people know that, uh, you know, if, uh, you're in a town that we're, where we're not covering um, actions and good punk rock gigs and you want to do a scene report, let us know. Um, we're yeah, definitely open definitely. to hearing scene reports from all over the fucking place, uh, like the world. Yeah, the only requirement would be yeah, that you uh, dig proper punk rock and you got proper leftist activism and you know what's going on in your community. Fucking come shoot the shit with us for five or ten minutes and tell us about it. So we're, you know, hit us up on the Facebook, um, you know, private message if you're interested in doing that, and we'll Twitter, make that happen. Punk's the number yeah. four progress. You can private message me on there, too. You can tweet me directly. Punk's the number four progress. <clears throat> Do that. And uh, so I said we're going to play some Screamers. Let's play and, the Screamers. Uh, this is a great video by the Screamers. Now, listen, the Screamers are like... <sighs> I gotta tell you, bro. There was like I, I. They're in every single. You know, I wasn't old enough to go to the mask, bro. You know, in Hollywood. Yeah, you know that, yeah, but that yeah, was kind of day yeah. one for L.A. punk rock. You know, that was where the Go Go's were when they were punk rock, and that's where the Germs and and Screamers and you know that's where it all really started was there, and um and the Screamers are hailed at have been heralded forever and ever as like the greatest of all of that. Like everyone just freaking loved them to death, but there's nothing available. And it's like, I mean, really, there's like this short little clip that is in like every punk rock documentary that mentions the Screamers. And it's just this like, you know, neat, 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 neat sound and him just all like freaked out. And it's just this short little 10 second clip. And I swear that was like all I ever seen of the Screamers. I just wanted to really know them more. And so I recently found it's a, a DVD, two DVD, two uh, disc set DVD that it came out a few years back. But um it's a one. It's got. It's called Population One, and it's got one. It's got a, um, like an hour long film made by um, Tomato Duplenty from um, the singer from um, the Screamers, and it's this amazing hour long precursor to the MTV video and the first kind of chromium stuff and like um, it, it, it's really really bitching and it's got all this great Screamers in it. But it also came with forty minutes of live Screamers footage, bro. Uh, this is where Devo comes from. This is where fucking, um, you know, today it's like the spits. I mean, without the screamers, oh, it's just so good. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to go out on a, a badass screamers video. And the, and the lyrical content to this is just incredible, too. It's um, Tomato de Plenty's a, a badass. But good show, dude. I love you, bro. I love you, too, man. Thanks. Cool. We'll play that shit, and then let's get out of here. On your feet, you're forsaken It's your race, get on your feet Put on your nose, it's your feet Go with it, be swept away Get at it, try to stop the suit Take action, get in charge ahead and break through Go with it, or be swept away Shove your way right to the top If you get dizzy, just don't stop You can dance to the sound of a thousand bands So keep your faith in your own hands Now, for old time's sake Give the future a break Between you and the stars just the ceiling Between you and the stars Just the ceiling Can you feel what I am feeling? The past of the books and the honor show The future carry within yourself 
let us see Or you'll survive Give us some action Give us some drive Go with us On this swept the way Get at it Fight, press on, pursue Take action A lesson touch ahead and break through Go with us On this swept the way In the future there's no privacy Go no fool in yourself, go no fool in me Dance and make your way upstream It's what you live for, it's a dream Now For all time's sake Get the future up right The future is The future is a better day. March right in and out your way. Dance or two, the future's thing. There's only victory, all to be. Let us see, or you'll survive. Give us some action, give us some drop. Go with us, or be swept away. Get at it, fight, press on, pursue. Take action, or press the charge ahead and break through. Let us see, or you'll survive Give us some action, give us some drive The future is a new good time Full of flowers and just as wild Give the future a break. Good night.